The international Netflix sensation Money Heist is about to come to an end. While this is an absolute tragedy, there is one positive about it. What a great excuse to watch Money Heist again. What better way to enhance your rewatch is there than learning all about the stories behind the stories that brought the world's favorite TV show to life? Money Heist, or La Casa de Papel, is one of the most successful international television hits of all time. It's the top-viewed Netflix series in six different countries, propelling the stars of the show to the kind of international fame most television actors couldn't even imagine. Well, it wasn't always that way, that's for sure. In fact, the cast and crew were pretty much sure that the first season of the show that aired on Spain's Antenna 3 would be its last. Then, in the show's biggest plot twist to date, Netflix took the flatlining show and turned it into one of their biggest success stories. With as many memorable characters as Money Heist has, you'd think that the creators of the series had everything mapped out from the very start. Well, it turns out that the exact opposite was true. Turns out that there was only a loose outline of what they wanted for the cast, with hopes that the actors would inspire the characters. Well, I'd say that strategy paid off handsomely. What's even more unbelievable is that the intricately plotted seasons weren't intricately plotted at all. Just like with casting, they had a rough idea of where they wanted to go and found the story as they went. I don't think flying by the seat of your pants as a television philosophy has ever worked out so well. The Professor might be the single best character in all of Money Heist. The show's resident mastermind was actually the hardest character for the writers to get a handle on. At first, they were thinking that he would be an older man played by a veteran actor like Jose Coronado. His commitments elsewhere made them rethink the character. Eventually, they went with the exasperated primary school teacher look that the Professor exemplifies so well. There's nothing that screams the Professor like an insecure genius with dorky charm in a cheap-looking suit. And heck, I wouldn't have it any other way. Planning one of the biggest heists in the history of man isn't easy whether you're robbing a bank or just writing about people who rob banks. So it's no shame that the creators of the show found themselves a little over their heads when it came to actually planning out the heist from the title. Luckily, they found plenty of people willing to help from very unlikely places. Members of the National Police and the Spanish Ministry of Interior were called in to offer their professional advice. I can't imagine how that conversation would have started. So if someone was going to plan the perfect robbery to utterly humiliate you, uh, how would one do it? Counterfeiting is a serious crime no matter where you are. So when it came to Money Heist faking the printing of millions, they had to take special care to make sure their bills were accurate enough to pass on camera, but not accurate enough to pass if someone tried to spend it. It turns out that the solution was to make bills just large enough that they would never pass as the real thing. I would have just used Monopoly money, but that's probably why they don't pay me the big bucks. Most heist dramas out there really don't worry too much about deep emotional themes for their films or TV shows. Money Heist didn't only want to make the best heist scenes out there, but they wanted to subvert the traditional motivations characters in the genre have. While the show seems like it's all about greed at first, you notice after a while that there's a greater thing than money drawing all the characters in. And that is love. No matter how much they try to fight it, everyone from Tokyo to the Professor is drawn into romance whether they want to be or not. That highlights one of the show's biggest themes. Everyone succumbs to love. Money Heist really doesn't like defining things in simple terms like good guys and bad guys. The show starts off by depicting a group of anti-heroes violently attacking a bank full of innocent people. Other series about anti-heroes like Breaking Bad or The Sopranos may have you root for the bad guy, but you know things aren't going to end well for them. Money Heist flips this on its head by making you ask, who are the real villains? By eventually depicting them as Robin Hood-style thieves, our anti-heroes are recast, and the question is asked to the audience, are the robbers the bad guys, or is it the institutions they're robbing? This was evidently very much intentional, as the show was intended to be as much a revenge story against the system as much as it was a heist story. 
Man, I love the theme song to Money Heist. True story. I actually listen to it on my Spotify all the time. So naturally, I was interested in learning about where the inspiration for My Life is Going On came from. Songwriter Cecilia Kroll wrote and performed the lyrics to the now famous song. Apparently, it was inspired by one of the earliest scenes in the show where Tokyo is offered a new opportunity by the professor. Now that I know what inspired the song, I can really see how it's all about Tokyo moving on confidently into a new situation with confidence. Creator Alex Pina, director Jesus Colmenar, and director of photography Miguel Amoedo were called the most prolific television trio in recent years by the Spanish newspaper La Vanguardia or The Vanguard. The article went in depth about how the trio works and where their inspiration comes from. Their projects tend to have a primary color as a major source of inspiration. For Money Heist, everything revolved around the color red over gray sets. If you look closely, you'll notice that blue, green, and yellow were forbidden by the team. When they commit, boy howdy, they commit. Berlin is one of the most complex characters in the series. By complex, I mean he's utterly terrifying. But in a way I kinda like, he goes from the show's biggest jerk to one willing to sacrifice everything for the team. So where did Pedro Alonso find his inner Berlin? Well, apparently the day before his audition, Pedro met a person he described as an intelligent person who was, quote, provocative and manipulative to him. Judging from the dark places Alonso took Berlin, I imagine he met his manipulative provocateur in an alleyway in the dead of night. Okay, I know, I know, the biggest, biggest Easter egg that everyone likes to talk about is that Tokyo's style and personality is based on Natalie Portman's young Matilda from The Professional. At this point, pretty much every diehard Money Heist fan knows this already, but do you know who Inspector Raquel Murillo is based on? Apparently, actress Itziara Utunio took inspiration from The Silence of the Lambs main character Clarice Starling. The female law enforcement officer trying to navigate a male-driven profession seems like the perfect point of inspiration. I'm just glad that the series hasn't given us a character based on Hannibal Lecter or Buffalo Bill. Actually, that's not true. That'd actually be pretty rad. Salvador Dali is the perfect artist for the professor to base their iconic masks off of. The brilliant surrealist painter is not only an icon in Spain, but his style of using confusion and a subversion of expectations in his art is exactly what the professor is all about. It's just too bad that Money Heist, uh, well, didn't actually ask for any permission to use Dali's visage as the main image for their series. The Gala Salvador Dali Foundation has been uh, very critical of the series since they were not consulted on Dali's image and that it's being used for criminal purposes. Just to put it out there, if anyone wants to use a mask with my face on it for a heist show, I'm, I'm cool with it. If you're like me and you want more money heist like right now, it's not a super easy thing to do. The next best thing is a different show by Alex Pina. The show Locked Up, or Vis a Vis, is about a young woman who gets incarcerated in a dangerous prison. It's like a much more intense version of Orange is the New Black with similar themes and artistic styles to Money Heist. If you like it as well, it just got a spin-off with Vis a Vis El Oasis in 2020. If you're a fan of heist movies, you probably recognize a lot about Money Heist. The series clearly takes inspiration from famous films like Inside Man, Reservoir Dogs, Dog Day Afternoon, The Sting, and The Ocean movies. It subverts the classic Ocean's Eleven build the team thing by just jumping into the heist and showing the team get together without using names, a uh, Reservoir Dogs style. Then they get into a hostage situation, kind of like Inside Man. Where they really subvert these movies intentionally is by focusing more on the passions of the characters than the robbery. A major real-world inspiration is clearly the Occupy Wall Street movement, which definitely had a similar style to Money Heist. Like our heroes, Occupy Wall Street was a massive rebellion against the modern economic system using stylish masks. Instead of a Salvador Dali mask, though, they went with V for Vendetta's Guy Fox mask. As a big fan of surrealism and Alan Moore, I'm not really sure which mask design I like more. Does anyone else need a lot more of the professor himself, Alvaro Morte? Well, lucky for all of us, he was recently cast in the hotly anticipated adaptation of Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series for Amazon Prime. He will be playing the character of Loghain Alblar. Fantasy shows are a bit of a gamble after the ending of Game of Thrones, but we know the series will be better than the first attempt to adapt the Wheel of Time for FX. Uh, because nothing could be worse than that. Oof. 
It's no surprise that Money Heist lead actress Ursula Cobrero is breaking out in Hollywood right now. What is surprising is how long it took. She recently appeared as the Baroness in Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins. The thing that I find funny about this is where the film is set. The movie was filmed in Tokyo, Japan to sell the urban modern ninja thing they were going for. So the first big Hollywood project for Tokyo was in Tokyo. And you know what, that's, that's just perfect. Here's to hoping that the G.I. Joe film franchise continues so we can see a lot more of the Baroness in the years to come. Although, you know, with uh, the critical and commercial response, I guess that's not too likely. It doesn't matter if the show's going to end because you can't keep a good show like Money Heist down for good. If you have any desire to go through the entire journey again as if it's the first time, you're in luck. A South Korean adaptation of Money Heist is on the way. This seems kind of perfect considering how popular K-dramas and La Casa de Papel are internationally on Netflix. Of course, Netflix's track record with adaptations is not uh, exactly spotless. Hopefully this isn't a death note situation. That may be the most tragic thing Netflix has ever produced. Although the narrator, uh, me, I, I say otherwise, but you know what, I, it doesn't matter, I'm just a voice. Money Heist had one of the best first episodes of a TV series I've ever seen. Be honest, it, you didn't dare touch that remote when episode two started to play. It grabs you from go and promises a ride you won't ever forget. Well, apparently this kind of excellence is really, really hard to get right. How hard? Well, apparently they went through 50 drafts of the original script for episode one before they got it right. Even the first five lines apparently took a whole month to get down. After that, they started taking down a script a week to keep up with production, but getting this train started sounds rough. Everyone in Hollywood is all about that franchise life. It's so bad right now that a ton of films like Without Remorse just seem like extended trailers for the franchise they want you to eventually fall in love with. So what better way to build a franchise than by taking it from an already beloved property? Well, that's already in the air as the creators of Money Heist have had conversations about spin-offs, sequels, and even a movie that could follow up the series after it ends. So that means at least a few of the characters survive until the end credits roll. That, that's something at least. The Money Heist fandom is generally pretty awesome. The show is a great way for international audiences to connect with one another over a shared love in a healthy way. That being said, some fans take things way too far with their love. For instance, in Nantes, France, a pair of fans attacked a hotel and a shop while wearing the iconic Salvador Dali masks. That, that, that is definitely taking your fandom you know, a little too far. And you thought it was bad when the Rick and Morty fans attacked McDonald's over Szechuan sauce. As of right now, there's no Money Heist video game. This is clearly the biggest mistake in video game history, on par with the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. Fortunately, we have been offered a bit of a compromise. The Tom Clancy Rainbow Six Siege gave Money Heist fans an olive branch by offering a limited time Money Heist event to their Operation Ember Rising expansion. The event was filled with cool callbacks and skins for fans of the series. It may not be the Money Heist game of my dreams, but it's something. The real Bank of Spain rudely didn't want to shut down so that a TV show could pretend to rob it for several weeks at a time. So inconsiderate of them. The production created a two-level soundstage to resemble the bank instead. They based the look of the bank on the Spanish architecture of the Francisco Franco era. Uh, setting the series in a bank inspired by fascism sounds exactly like something Money Heist would do, actually. I really love the style of Money Heist, but not as much as the Italian fashion label Diesel. They famously launched a line based on the style of the international hit. T-shirts, hoodies, caps, and more were based on characters, colors, and logos of the series. Now I need you to excuse me so I can go buy an unreasonable amount of those clothes. I definitely need a Tokyo shirt, like, right now. Okay, so... There's one production Easter egg that genuinely scares me. Before they decided on the Salvador Dali masks, the option they almost went with was a Don Quixote mask. Quixote famously was a knight who tried to fight windmills thinking they were giants. He's become a symbol for hopeless causes. So the idea that one of their first choices was Quixote makes me think that they might be doomed. I, I really, really hope not, but I guess we'll find out soon. If Money Heist really did blow your socks off, I encourage you to check out some of Netflix's other international hits. Lupin, Dark, Babylon Berlin, Kingdom, and Sabura Blood on Rome are just the tip of the iceberg for your next Money Heist obsessions. 